Today we're going to talk about the normal distribution. This information pertains to chapter 6 of your textbook. There are three special normal distributions that we are going to address and answer many word problems together. The first one is called the standard normal distribution and it is famous. It's called the famous Z distribution and the variable that we are going to speak about is variable Z. The next one would be the normal distribution in variable X and this is where we're going to answer many word problems together. And the third one in the um, chapter 6 is the sampling distribution and the variable is X bar. I'm going to teach you how to deal with all three of these very special normal distributions. So, before we begin speaking about these particular lecture notes, I do want to say something. The goal of this chapter is to answer the following type of question, just so you'll know. We're not ready for this question at this moment, but we will be. We have to answer questions like these, and let's just take a look at number one, for example. The test scores for a certain exam are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Find the probability of a person's score falling above 79. So this is a real life situation and we are going to be able to find this probability. But we have to know the basics before we can answer questions like this particular word problem. And so let's do that now. Let's learn the basics so that we can handle a problem like this one. First of all, I will remind you that all normal distributions do satisfy the famous empirical rule. Remember, for a normal distribution, it says that 68.2% of the data falls within one standard deviation of the mean, 95.4% of the data falls within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% of the data falls within three standard deviations of the mean. Mu represents the population mean and sigma represents the population standard deviation. So that's mu plus one sigma, mu plus two sigma, mu plus three sigma. Mu minus one sigma, mu minus two sigma, mu minus three sigma. And that would be standard deviations. One below, one above. Two above, two below. Three below, three above. And these uh, percentages are guaranteed for a normal distribution. The very first distribution that we're going to speak about is the standard normal distribution. And this is where the famous Z table comes into play. The Z distribution also follows the empirical rule, but we actually always know the number on the Z axis. The mean is always zero and the standard deviation is always one. So this represents a standard normal distribution in variable Z and it shows you how the empirical rule is applied. So 68%, 95%, and 99%. That's the empirical rule. Notice that there is symmetry. So if we are guaranteed at least 68% of the data within one standard deviation of the mean, then half of 68% is 34%. And so there is symmetry with these normal distributions. This is what a standard normal distribution looks like. And that's the first type. So let's address that. The standard normal distribution. Uh, the properties that make it special, once again, the mean is always zero and the standard deviation is always one. In this particular chapter, we are going to deal with population notation. In chapter three, we um, used X bar a lot for the sample mean and we did not speak a lot about the population mean. But in this chapter, we will be using population notation because these are populations that we're speaking about. And so with the Z distribution, this is what another graph would look like. You have a Z axis 
the mean is at the center, and it, the mean is zero. And then we have 50% of the area on either side of the mean. The total area under the curve is 100%. I will tell you that this z-score is coming from the idea of a measurement of position. Remember, no matter what data set you're speaking about, for every data value x in a data set, you can find its corresponding z-score with the formula that we spoke about in Chapter 3. The z-score for a data value x tells us how many standard deviations that the data value falls above or below the mean. So these z-scores are measurements of position, and I will be showing you how to use the famous two-page z-table. And then, once we master the z-table and finding area under the curve, we will move to those word problems, those probability questions. And those will be normal distributions in variable x. And the population mean doesn't have to be zero, and the standard deviation does not have to be one. And so it looks like this. You have an x-axis, you have the mean at the center, and then you have 50% of area on either side. What we will do with these word problems is we will start out in x, and then we will go to z using the z-score formula, x minus mu over sigma. For every x, there is a z. This is a measurement of position. So if we know x, we can go back to z. Once we are in Z, we can use the Z table to find area. Area and probability are the same. So that's how we're going to answer probability questions. Now, in this section, in all of the sections, there will be two types of problems that we will have to solve. The first type is they give us Z on the Z axis and ask us to find area or probability. They give us x, we know x, and we have to find area or probability. The other way around this is they give us area under the curve, and they want us to find the unknown z, or if they give us area under the curve, they want us to find the unknown x. Those are called cutoff problems, and for the distribution in terms of variable x, the cutoff formula is z times sigma plus mu. And basically what we're doing is we're solving the z-score formula using algebra and solving it for x. So if we want to find an unknown x, this will be our cutoff formula. Now, the third distribution is called a sampling distribution, and the variable is x-bar. x-bar means sample mean. Lowercase n is sample size. Mu sub x bar is mean of sample means, and sigma sub x bar is the standard deviation of sample means. It is the population standard deviation over the square root of sample size. And the mean of sample means is the original population mean. Let me tell you how you create a sampling distribution. You take a population that has a variable x. In that population, you take as many samples as possible, all of the same size in. For each sample that you take from the very same population, you calculate the sample mean for that sample. And what you end up with is a distribution of sample means from the original population. That's why we have our variable x bar. And these are true statements. Now, it looks like this. X bar axis, the mean of sample means is the population mean at the center. 50% of the area is on either side. There is a z-score formula. If we know z, we can find area under the curve and answer probability questions. For every sample mean that we were able to construct, we can find its z-score, its measurement of position. So x bar minus mu divided by parentheses, sigma over the square root of n. So we're dividing by the standard error of the mean. There is also a cutoff formula in case they ask us to find an unknown x bar that fall, uh, falls on the axis. The cutoff formula is going to be, if you solve it for x bar, 
x bar equals z times sigma over the square root of n plus mu. Now, don't worry, as we cover each section, I will go over the notation and the properties again. But I will say that all three of these normal distributions have the same eight properties. And these same eight properties are, they are all symmetrical, bell-shaped. The mean equals the median equals the mode and located at the center. Variable z, x, and x bar, which are on the axes, are all continuous variables. That means they're measurable. So x and z and x bar could be he uh, height, weight, length. They are unimodal. There's only one data value that occurs most frequently, so just one mode. The total area uh, under the curve is 1 or 100 percent. The curve is not supposed to touch the axis. It only approaches it, and that's a calculus concept. Again, the graph is bell-shaped, and then they all follow the famous empirical rule, which we have already addressed at the beginning of the lecture. So, with that being said, we are first going to start with some very basic problems with the standard normal distribution. This table is the one page Z table. These lecture notes pertain to the one page Z table. The old edition of the textbook used to use the uh, one page Z table. The new edition of the textbook and Connect Math use a two page. So the purpose of this Tegrity video and the videos to follow will be to utilize the two-page z-table so that we are up to date with the current edition of the textbook. I will say that all of these are areas inside the table and you look up z-scores on the outside and at the top. Z-scores can be positive, negative, or zero. This one-page z-table only gives positive z-scores. Um, but we are going to take a look at the two-page z-table. The largest z-score that you can look up is a 3.09, and that area is 0 .4990. The way the one-page z-table works, these areas that you have here are the areas between 0 and any positive z. So the area between 0 and z equals 3.09 is 0 .4990 which is very close to 50%. If you have a Z value that's larger than 3.09 on the Z axis, they say to let the area be 0.4999, and that's the area between 0 and positive Z. Now, the two-page Z table is different. So, if you are reading the hard copy of the lecture notes, then when you go through these 15 questions, you will see how I utilized the one-page z-table. But I'm going to show you how to do most of these 15 questions, maybe not all because of time, using the two-page z-table. I will say that the calculator tips are still the same, so I'm going to also teach you how to use uh, the calculator for these problems. If you would like to write this down, this first number is section 6-1, section 6-2, section 6-3, six section 6-1, six section 6-2, six section 6-3. Six and I'm going to show you how to use these calculator commands. So I'm going to keep this handy, and I'm going to take a look at our 15 questions. Now, I may not have a chance to do all 15, but I will remind you at the end of this lecture, there is a set of 10. And I feel like you should try those on your own. The answers are there. And you can try it using the two-page Z table or using your calculator. So that's the last sheet here. This is actually learning unit number four, I believe. But I thought I'd attach it to these lecture notes. So let's take a look at question number one. And we are going to use the two-page z-table. Let's address the two-page z-table. The two-page z-table, one page with the positive z-scores looks like this. Again, these are areas or probabilities, and you look up your z-score on the outside. 
the way this Z table works, the two page, the area in the table is the area strictly below the positive Z score here. It says for Z values greater than 3.49, use .9999. So that would be the area below those Z values greater than 3.49. For the negative Z scores that you can look up, then still these areas are areas below the Z score on the Z axis. And it says for Z values that are smaller than negative 3.49, use an area below it of 0 .0001. And so pay attention to the footnotes. Now once again, these are areas and these are your z-scores. Remember, if a z-score for a data value is negative, that means the data value x falls below the mean. If the z-score for a data value is positive, that means that the data value x falls above the mean. And the z-score can be zero. If the z-score is equal to zero, that means that the data value x is equal to the mean of the distribution. So let us begin with question number one. It says find the area between z equals 0 and z equals 1.5. So I have some bell-shaped curves already drawn out here and we're going to use our uh, two-page Z table. I'm also going to shade. So here we go. 1.5 would be here on the Z axis and we want to find the area between Z equals 0 and Z equals 1.5. So I'm going to shade that area in red. Okay, so that's the area that we're trying to find. Now, the way the uh, Z table works, when I go to the two page Z table and I look up a Z score of 1.5, you put your left finger here and your right finger here. 1.5 plus 0 .00 is 1.50, and Z scores are given in two places. Where your two fingers meet, that is the area that is below that z-score, 0.9332, very close to 1. So let me remove the table. So what the table area is saying, and I'll use a green marker for this, the table area is all of this in green. And that is, and I'll use the green pen, 0.9332. The area that we are trying to find is in red. Okay? So what we can do here is we can use some of our properties to come up with this particular area. Now down below, I'm going to do this. The total area below Z equals 1.5. An area is under the curve even though I'm writing this below is 0.9332. By property, all of the area below 0 is 0.5. You can even write that in here. And you can make it 0 0.5000 for area. So I hope that you see if we take the 0.9332 and we subtract the 0.5, we are left with what is in red. So that is the point for question number one. You would say that your answer is equal to 0.9332 minus 0.5. And you have 0.4332, final answer. Therefore, the answer the area in red is 0.4332. And it should make sense because 0.4332 plus 0.5 together add up to 0.9332.
which is the total area below z equals 1.5. Now I'm going to show you the uh, calculator command. The calculator says that when we have a standard normal distribution, we should go to something called normal CDF, put in the smaller z and then the larger z. So I'm going to show you where to find this command. Before I do that, I would like for you to know that all of these axes you read from left to right, so negative infinity to positive infinity, left to right. Okay? So, I'm going to put both versions of the calculator on the document camera. The um, variable button is where you go. Um, it is beside the clear button in both calculators. But you want to go to distribution. This one's in yellow and this one's in blue. So second variables and then second variables over here. Okay. So it is number two for both the both of these. Enter, enter. Now you can see the TI 83 plus that's kind of old. They're asking for the smaller z of zero and then comma 1.5 and close that in parentheses. As a reminder, your comma and your parentheses are here. And then you would press enter. Over here, they're asking for the lower or smaller z, so that's zero. The larger z is 1.5. The mean of the z distribution is always zero, and the standard deviation is always one. So leave that for now and press enter. And you have 0 .4332, 0 .4332, if you round to four places accurately for each of those. So the same answer there. And that does agree with what we have by hand using the table. So, I want to go to question number two. Question number two says, find the area between z equals negative 0.48 and z equals zero. So let me take out another distribution here. Negative 0.48 would be about here. And we want to find the area between that z score and z equals zero. So that's the area in purple. When I go to my z table, and this is question number two, and I look up a negative 0.48, I go to negative 0.4 here with my left finger and 0 0.08 with my right finger where my two fingers meet in the table because these two add up to a negative 0 0.48. 0 0.3156 is the area strictly below a z-score of negative 0.48. So I'm going to write in that area. So that's this area. 0.3156. Okay. And that would also be this unshaded area, 0.3156, under the curve. Area is under the curve. Now, the way to solve this problem is to remember that the area above zero is 0.5 and the area below zero is 0.5. So, if we take, and I'll shade that area in red here, the area in red by property is 50%. If we take the 0.5 and we subtract the area that we know, 0.3156, that will leave us with the area that we're trying to find. So the answer to this question 
is going to be 0.5, take away 0.3156. And I do believe that gives us... an answer of 0.1844. So there is your answer to question number two. And I'll draw an arrow, 0.1844. And it makes sense. This area, 0.1844 plus 0.3156, together should add up to 0.5, and they do. The calculator, I'll just show you this calculator. Go to second variables, number two. The lower is a negative 0.48 and the upper larger z is zero. Remember your negative button is found down here. There's your negative button. Don't use the minus key, use the negative key. And then paste. And you receive 0.1844 to four places accurately, which is the same answer that we received by hand. Okay, with this calculator, second variables. Number two, we go negative 0.48 comma zero. 0.1844, again, for your answer. I know that's a little dark. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so that was question number two. I want to move to the next question. Number three, find the area to the right of z equals 1.02. So I will get out a piece of paper. 1.02 should be here approximately. And we want to find the area to the right of it. So that's the area in this right tail, and it's the color red. When we look up a 1.02 in the Z table, we go to 1.0 and then 0 0.02. Where your two fingers meet, 0.8461, that's the area strictly below or to the left of 1.02. So I'm going to write that in, 0.8461. And if I shade that, that would be the area in purple. The way to answer this question is to take the total area under the curve, which is 1. Subtract the area in purple, and it should leave you with your area that's in the color red, which is the answer to the question. So 1 minus 0.8461 is 0.1539. Check. Now, the calculator. I've got to show you something. On the calculator, negative infinity is a negative E99, and positive infinity is a positive E99. Let me show you how to locate the E. The E is above the comma button, but it's in blue and it's a double E. But when you press second comma, it shows up as a single E. Okay? So, second variable, the lower is uh, 2.01, excuse me, 1.02, and the upper is going to be second comma 99 for positive infinity. So that's going from my smaller z to my larger z and paste. And the answer is 0 0.1539 to four places accurately. So the calculator is a more direct way to answer that question. Okay, that was question number three.
question number four. Find the area to the left of z equals negative point forty two. Okay, a piece of paper. Negative point four two and we want to go left. A negative point four two would be here approximately. And we want to find left. When you see that you have to find that area to the left of it, you should be excited because that's exactly how the two-page Z table works. So you can find that answer directly and be done. Here's your negative point four. And then up at the top, point zero two, your two fingers meet at point three three seven two. And that's the answer to question number four. Point three three seven two. So this area, point three three seven two. And again, this was question four. That is the area below the negative point four two. With your calculator, you would go, go second variable, number two. And this time you'll go from negative infinity to a negative point four two, because negative infinity is smaller. So put in the negative before you do the second comma. And then negative point four two. Paste. The answer is point three three seven two. And that's exactly what we we, we received in the table. Okay. So let me go to the next question. I hope that you're seeing that all of these are a little bit different. Question number five, find the area between z equals 1.23 and z equals 1.90. So let me get out a piece of paper. These two values are on the same side. There's 1.23, and here's 1.90, and I'm going to shade. And this is question five. So find the area between bows. Now, the two-page Z table is going to give you the area below 1.23 and the area below 1.90. What you're going to do here is look up both areas and say the larger area minus the smaller area, and it's going to give you the desired area. So 1.9 is quick. 1.90 is going to give you an area of 0.9713. That's the area below it, 0.9713. And then 1.23, here's 1.2.03, the area below it's 0 0.8907, 0 0.8907. So the way that this problem will work, the answer is going to be 0 0.9713 minus 0 0.8907. And I have 0 0.0806. Now, calculator. This is very easy. Second variables, normal CDF. The smaller is 1.23 and the larger is 1.90. Paste. 0 0.0806. Okay. Now, I think I'm going to jump over one or two of these questions because I hope and pray you're catching on at this point. Six is very similar to number five, except they're both negative, and so they're both on the same side also, but they're both below the mean of zero. Um, number seven is very similar to question number three above. Um, so I will jump to question number eight just because of the notation. 
This is probability notation. So do note, I'm leaving you to do 6 and 7 on your own. I did 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now I'm jumping to 8. Find the probability that a randomly selected Z falls between a Z of negative 0.05 and a Z of 1.10. This probability is the same as the area between these two z-scores. So let me take out a piece of paper. And we're going to find that. Negative 0 0.05 should be here. And 1 point, I think it was 0, 1 should be here on the axis. 1.10, excuse me, 1.10. So between negative 0 0.05 and 1.10. And I'm going to shade. Now, these E scores are, are on either side of the mean. So this is how we're going to handle this. The way the uh, Z table works, it gives the area below negative 0.05 and it gives the area below 1.10. So the probability that a randomly selected Z on the Z axis falling between negative 0.05 and 1.10 is this area in purple. So I'm going to look up both Z scores and it's the situation again where we say the larger area minus the smaller area. I'm going to look up 1.10 first and that area is 0.8643. That's the area below it. 0.8643. And then look up an area of 0 0.05. 0 0.05. And I did not mean to say look up an area, but look up a z score of 0 0.05. A negative 0 0.05. Here's negative 0 0.0 and here's 0 0.05. Your two fingers meet down here at 0 0.4801. 0 0.4801. So that's this area. Again, area is not on the axis. It's under the curve here, but it's easy to show these numbers below so that we don't have so many shaded areas in the picture. But this is the shaded area we're trying to find. So the answer, we take the 0.8643 minus the 0.4801, and that difference will be the final answer. That difference is 0.3842 and the answer to the question. So the probability that a randomly selected Z falling between negative 0.05 and 1.10 is about 38% or 0.3842. Now the calculator again is very simple. Second variable, number two negative 0 0.05, 1.10, and paste, enter, enter, 0.3843. Now, this is the first time when the calculator actually disagrees with the table. And that sometimes happens. The table is an approximation. The calculator and computers that you use in statistics, they're actually more accurate than the two-page Z table. So 0.3843. Let me tell you how I'm going to make out the test. Since I do not require you to purchase a TI-84 calculator, the answer choice that I'm going to look for on the test is the 0.3842. So multiple choice, A, B, C, and D. Don't worry, I'm not going to put both by hand and calculator. I'm going to put 0 .3842, 0 .4801, 0 .8643, and maybe just a 0.9332. And then you'll easily be able to see that the answer is A. Even if you use your calculator and not the table, 
go with the closer answer. So I'm not putting both to confuse you. Sometimes they do disagree. Now we are ready to change some, some uh, directions here. Questions 1 through 8 deal with if you know Z, find area or probability. But questions 9 through 15 say if you know the area, find the unknown Z on the Z axis, which is a cutoff problem. And so with the calculator, we are going to be here. Invert the norm. And the way the command works, you have to put in the area to the left of the unknown Z on the Z axis. So we are here now. Okay. So let's work a couple of these problems. And this would be problems 9 through 15. Problem number 9. Find the positive Z value that corresponds to an area of 0 .4066 between 0 and that positive Z. You do have to draw the correct picture. And so I am actually going to change my handouts. My new uh, normal, normal curve looks like this. I am going to put the zero here and z here. Please do note that it looks like the curve is touching the axis. The curve should not touch the axis on either side. It approaches it but does not touch it. Find the unknown positive z such that the area between z equals zero and that positive z is an area of 0.4332, I believe it said. Excuse me, 0 0.4066. Okay. You do have to draw the correct picture, so that's the first step. Now, we know area, but we don't know the Z on the Z axis. The way that this is going to work is that the area we look up has to be the area strictly below this Z. And that's going to include all of this. By property, this is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 plus 0 0.4066 is 0 0.9066. So that's the area we look up in the Z table. So I'll do that now. So this time, we are going inside the table and finding area and working out to find the cutoff. 1.3 and then 0 0.02. So if you say 1.3 plus 0 0.02, you can do that on your calculator if you have to add those two together. Z is 1.32 and that's the answer to question 9. 1.32. So 1.32 is the cutoff on the z-axis such that the area between z equals 0 and 1.32 is 0 0.4066. So that's number 9. Next question. Oh, excuse me. Calculator. The way the calculator works is go to second variables and go down to number 3, invert the norm. Press enter. You have to put in the area below the unknown Z, so it's 0 0.9066. Over here, 0 0.9066. And then paste. So if you round 1.32, 1.32 is your answer. When you use invert the norm, round it two places accurately because we are giving uh, Z scores. Okay. Question number 10 is next. Find the Z value such that the area of 0 0.0239 falls to the right of it. Again, the hard part is finding the picture. Find the Z value such that the area of 0 0.0239 falls to the right of it. Okay? So I'm going to take my handout once again, and we've got to set this up. Again, this is a z-axis, and this is the mean of zero because we have the standard normal distribution. 
And I'm going to put two possibilities here. You're either going to say your z is over here, which would mean it's negative, or your z is over here, and which w would mean the z is positive. But we know that the area, 0 0.0239, falls to the right of it. So let's shade right of, right of. And that area has to be 0 0.0239. There's only one picture that makes sense, and it's this one. Point zero two three nine is very small. There's no way that this can be point zero two three nine, especially since all of the area above zero itself is fifty percent or point five. So the correct picture, the unknown z is positive, and this area above it is point zero two three nine. The area that we look up though in the z table has to be this area that's how the z-table works. This area is 1 minus 0 0.0239 because the total area under the curve is 1. If we take away this area, we're left with this area. So 1 minus 0 0.0239 is 0 0.9761. That's the area we look up in the z-table. So 0.9761 9761 It looks like that it is here. So if you work your way out to 1.9 and up to point zero 0.08, your Z score is 1.98. So that's the answer, 1.98, okay? So now we know on the z-axis this is 1.98 here. And that area cuts off the upper 0 0.0239, the area here. 2.39% if you'd like to say the upper 2.39%. Now, calculator, you will do stat, excuse me, clear, second variable, number three. The area below it, I can actually put in one minus 0 0.0239. They do allow me to put in that calculation. Or you could just say 0 0.9761. Enter. 1.98 to two places accurately is your unknown z-score, your cutoff. Okay, so that was number 10. Let's do number 13. I'm skipping 11 and 12. 13, find two z values, one positive, one negative, so that the areas in the two tails total 5%. This picture is going to look like this. And again, this is 13. Zero. Z axis, shade the left tail, shade the right tail, find two Z values, one negative, one positive, such that the area in the two tails total 5%. So this is 2.5% and this is 2.5%, which is 0 0.025, 0 0.025 as a decimal. This one is rather easy because by symmetry, these are basically the same z, except one is minus and one is plus. So we will look up an area of 0 0.025 in the z table. And 0 0.025 falls, and sometimes you have to look for it. Point zero two five here. So when you work your way out to one point negative one point nine and up to point zero six, your z score is a negative one point ninety six on the z axis. 
So this one's negative 1.96 and this one's positive 1.96. So your answers, plus and minus 1.96 to question number 13. You don't have to worry about looking this one up um, because this one would probably be the easiest one. By symmetry, they're basically the same except plus and minus. With the calculator, you would do second variables, number three. The area below it's .025, and then paste. And you get a negative 1.96 to two places. Okay? Question number um, 14. Find the z-value that corresponds to the 90th percentile. For a z-value to fall at the 90th percentile, that means that 90% of the data is below it, or the area is below it, and 10% of the area is above it. So I hope you know that a z-value at the 90th percentile would have to be here. All of this would be 0.90, and all of this would be 0 0.10, 100%. If it's located at the 90th percentile, the area below it is 90%. So the unknown Z has to be positive and it has to fall here. It cannot fall here on the axis. There's no way that the area below it could be as large as 90% if you said the unknown Z falls here. I love these problems because percentile questions are my favorite. You just look up the area, the percentile, because that is the area below it. Point, um, 0.8997, I believe. So, if you cannot find point nine zero exactly, go with the closer area of point 0.8997. Work your way out to 1.2 and up to point zero 0.08. So, the answer is a positive 1.28. We cannot find 90% exactly. So 89.97% is the, the closest one. And the textbook says to do that. So answer is 1.28. 1.28 is your z-score for this question. That falls at the 90th percentile. For the calculator, second variables, number 3, 0.90 and paste. 1.28 to two places accurately is your z-score. The last problem, number 15, find the z-value that corresponds to the fifth percentile. So by definition, that means 5% of the area is below it and 95% of the area is above it. So that z-score is here, which means it must be negative. And this is 5%. 0 0.05 and all of this above it has to be 95 percent 0.95 area. That's by definition a fifth percentile. So we look up the area of 0 0.05. That is the area below it. When you try to look up the area of 0 0.05 you see that it falls halfway between these two values. The textbook says that if you cannot find the area exactly, go with the closer area. But here, these two are equally close. And you can see that. 0 .0505 minus 0 .05 is a difference of 5 times 10 to the negative 4 power, that scientific notation. So that would be 0 .00001, 5 times 10 to the negative 4. Maybe it's one less zero. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then if you take 0 .05 and subtract 0 .0495, 
you get the same difference, which is 0 0.0001. 5 times 10 to the negative 4. And I may have, I'm sorry, I think that as scientific notation is 0 0.0005. Sorry about that. That means 5 times 10 to the negative 4. Yeah. 5 times 10 to the negative 4. Regardless, they had the same difference. So, here the textbook says to go with the larger z-score in terms of absolute value. When you work out, this is negative 1.64. When you work out here, that's negative 1.65. That negative 1.65 is going to have the larger absolute value, so the textbook wishes for you to go with the negative 1.65. So I'm going to go with the negative 1.65. Go with the z-score with the larger absolute value. And so the answer is negative 1.65. Now, I will be trying to trick you with this one on the test. I will put negative 1.65 negative 1.64, 1.65, and 1.64. Hopefully you'll choose letter A as the answer. I am testing your knowledge of what the textbook says to do to go with the larger z-score in terms of absolute value whenever you're looking up an area and that area falls exactly between two given areas in the table. So I'm testing your knowledge of that. Now, the thing with the calculator, when you do second variables, invert the norm, 0 0.05, and paste, you get negative 1.64. So be very careful. Don't go, and this is the special, special case only of an area of 0 0.05. Negative 1.64 is from the calculator, but that's not the answer that you would give me. You'd give me negative 1.65. They're not all this tricky. This is a tricky problem, this particular question. So I want to make another version of the same type of question, and this is not on the sheet, but I do want to explore it. I could ask you, so pretend this is number 16. Find the z-score that falls at the 95th percentile and that z-score would have to be here. The area below it is 0.95 and the area above it is 0 0.05 by definition of percentile. So we will go in and try to find an area of 0.95 Here's that same tricky situation. If you notice, the area above it is that crazy 5%. Well, 0 0.9495, 0 0.9505, 1 1.64 or 1 1.65, the z-score with the larger absolute value is the 1.65. So the answer is 1.65. Your calculator is going to give you a positive 1.64. So on a multiple choice test, 1.65 is the answer. I'll have these possibilities. But make sure even though your calculator says 1.64, go with the 1.65. I can make another scenario with the same type of question. And then we'll close today's lecture. I could say find two z-scores. one positive and one negative such that the area in the two tails total 10% Find two z-scores, one positive and one negative, such that the area in the two tails total 10%. So you have 0 and z, 
shade the left tail, shade the right tail. This is 5% and this is 5%. Together it makes 10%. And we just handled this situation in question 15. This is a negative 1.65 by symmetry. This is positive 1.65. So on the test, the correct answer is plus and minus 1.65, but your calculator is going to give you plus and minus 1.64. And then I'll have some other options. Make sure you go with answer A. And that, again, the area that involves 5% or 95% is always a very tricky area there. So, hopefully now you can use the two-page Z table. Um, as a reminder, at the end of the lecture, there exists an existing 10 that you can try. And it is a combination of, if they give you Z, find the area. If, it, if they give you the area, find Z. Number 8 is the question I just did. Find two Z values, one negative, one positive, so that the area in the two tails total 10%. The answer is plus and minus 1.65. But do try these. And remember that the answer that you receive by hand does not always agree with the calculator. But I make out the test as if you only have a two-page Z table and not a fancy calculator. But I will not put both the by hand answer and the calculator answer. If they do disagree, it is ever so slightly. I hope that you have enjoyed the lecture. Um, these particular questions are the easiest questions. So you really need to master these basic, basic questions. Until you master these basic questions, you are not going to be able to master the major word problems. So practice on these. Practice Connect Math, and I promise the next couple of sections will be much, much easier. God bless you, and have a nice day. That concludes Section 6-1.